Good morning, welcome to theCUBE Conversation here in Palo Alto at theCUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier. We are the special conversation with Fortinet's John Madison, Senior Vice President of Products and Solutions with Fortinet. Welcome to theCUBE Conversation. Good to be here again. So you guys have some hard news today hitting. It's called the Fortinac, Forta, like Fortinet, Forta NAC, Network right. Access Control Fortinac. Um, significant announcement for you guys. Take a minute to explain the announcement. Yeah, so about two months ago, we acquired a company called Bradford Networks. Uh, they uh, compete, provide products in the network access control arena. Uh, other companies in that space are things people like Forescout or Cisco or uh, HP. Uh, we think it's a very important space because it's going to be the, the foundations for IoT security. You probably heard a lot of buzz around IoT security. Uh, and there's different levels of IoT security. There's that for the enterprise, there's that for the cloud, et cetera. And so uh, for us, this is an important announcement because it gives us that added visibility now to IOT devices via the fabric. And the product is an appliance, is it software? What's the product uh, It's making? both, so you can do uh, a virtual machine version, uh, it's also an appliance, uh, it comes in different levels. The key for it though is scalability, because with IOT devices, we're not talking 100 devices anymore, we're talking millions of devices. And so what it's able to do is look across many different protocols and devices and provide that visibility of just about any device attaching to your network. Who's the target audience for Fortinet? Is it the data center, is it the cloud, is it the remote? Where does where's the product actually sit? Well, it's more by industry. So certain industries will have lots more of these types of devices attaching. So think of manufacturing, for example. Uh, those sort of, those uh, the medical industry as well. And so those are the real education's another one. So it's more by vertical and it's really focused on uh, campuses, large campuses or remote offices or even manufacturing plants where Again, these devices are attaching to your network. And they'll sit at the edge m monitoring what's coming in and out. Is that the purpose? Well, that's the neat thing about it. It doesn't have to sit at the edge and see all the traffic. What it does is interrogate uh, existing devices at the edge. It could be a switch, it could be a router, it could be an access point. And from that information, it can uh, make an assessment of what the device is attaching and then apply a policy. So this is part of a bigger holistic picture. We've had conversations with Fortinet in the past, a few conversations, certainly around security. With cloud, it's the top conversation on-premises, it's a top conversation. You guys also have some complementary products involved, like the security fabric and the connectors. Does this fit into that? Take a minute to explain the, the relevance of how mm. Fortinac works with the security fabric and the connectors. Yeah, last time I was here, I explained the uh, fabric. Uh, and so the, the fabric is basically something, it's a set of Fortinet product solutions, in a way, that are very tightly integrated into the network or into the customer's ecosystem. Uh, and then once you've built that, you then provide automation systems across for protection, detection, and response. And the whole idea is to make sure you're covering what we call the digital attack surface. The digital attack surface now includes, obviously, IoT devices. So gaining this visibility from 40 NAC, making sure the information is available to our fabric is crucial for us to make sure we can protect you know, the digital attack surface. And for customers, if the fabric is a holistic view, the NAC is a product that sits in the campuses or within the network that kind of communicates into the fabric, is that, is that right? Right, and so the, so the NAC can see all the IoT devices attaching and then it integrates back into the fabric. The fabric can then apply a policy. So the fabric can see everything now from IoT to the campus, to the WAN, to the data center, to the cloud. And if, for example, those IoT devices are communicating with something in the cloud, the fabric can see end to end and apply, a, for example, a segmentation policy end to end all the way through the, the infrastructure. You know what I love about having conversations with Fortinet is that you guys spark two types of conversations, use cases and then product technology conversations. So this obviously is an IoT kind of product that makes a lot of sense, you got a little SD-WAN in there. This is the top conversation around enterprises and people who are looking at cloud and or looking at re-platforming re around cloud operations is the you know, cloud architect, it's the uh, network yeah. architect. These guys are really asked being asked to redo things. So how does the IOT uh, fit into this? What is the uh, product, what does the Fortinac do for IOT from a use case standpoint and then yeah. product and technology? That's a, that, that's a good conversation because recently, maybe the last 18 months, uh, instead of talking about a point solution, instead of talking about a specific use case, customers want to put all those use cases together and then produce a longer term, more holistic architecture. So now they have uh, cybersecurity architects, security architects, as well as networking architects. 
uh, and they want to look at their infrastructure because that's the thing that's changing the most right now. Sure, the threat landscape's out there and the cyber criminals are changing stuff, et cetera, but it's really that infrastructure that's changing the most because they're moving to flexible WAN systems or cloud. And so they want to integrate it end-to-end -end over a long time period. So what they want to be able to do is to automate. That's the key word, is automation, is to make sure all these devices attaching are part of the security automation architecture and then they can apply that security policy automatically to that device. You know, one of the things that's a big trend in the industry is having network guys and people who are managing infrastructure move from a command line interface, DLI, to automation. Mm. You mentioned that. How does the, the Fortinac extend the security fabric? Because you guys essentially have that holistic view with, with the fabric. So now you have this IoT capability. How is that device extending the security fabric and what's the benefits to the buyer? Yeah, and so the, so the fabric uh, had uh, visibility, obviously, at the next generation firewall. Uh, we also have deployments of access points and switches, but obviously there are other companies with vast deployments of switches. Uh, I can name a few and, and access points. And so if, we weren't, if they weren't our switches, we couldn't necessarily see those devices attaching. And so what 40 NAC does, it comes in and provides us that now complete visibility. It doesn't matter if it's our infrastructure switches and APs, it could be somebody else's. 40 NAC can interrogate and talk to those devices and not only gain that visibility, but if we decide there's a certain security posture we want to apply to some IT device, we don't know what it is, we want to segment it, restrict its access, uh, then we can add, the fabric can then tell the, the 40 NAC device to provide control and segmentation back to so it. So they're working together. Working together and it gives us now complete visibility of the IT devices. Let's talk about some of the trends around segmentation. We heard uh, certainly recently at VMworld about micro segmentation has been one of the key things. A lot of top architects, both network and cloud and software, are looking at micro segmentation or segmentation in general around the network. Why is it important and what are some of the use cases that you guys are seeing around segmentation? It's, uh, it's extremely important, um, but it's a very complex problem in that even though customers have bought a lot of different security products from different vendors and different infrastructure, one of the things they don't always realize is they bought a lot of different orchestration systems, uh, a lot of command and control systems, and those are key in the future because those systems determine what the infrastructure looks like. Uh, your NAC system is kind of an orchestration system allowing different devices to come on off the network. SD-WAN has its own orchestration system. You talked about micro-segmentation, things like v uh, VMware and NSX and Cisco ACI. All the clouds have their own orchestration systems as well, AWS, Azure. And so what's interesting is none of them really talk to each other. They're more focused on looking after their part of the infrastructure. Now to do segmentation end-to-end, -end, you really need to have end-to-end -end orchestration across all the systems. If I want to orchestrate, as I said, that IoT communication with a, a select application in the cloud, I need to orchestrate all the way through those orchestration systems. You need an orchestration for the orchestration system that you have in the well, cloud. Well, you know, it's like <laughs> you need a mother of all orchestrators in some way, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. And so what's going to happen really is your security architecture and segmentation will be specific to a platform or fabric as we're building, and then your, your fabric has to connect into the orchestration systems to tell it what's going on within that section of the orchestration. So if it's, again, if it's a NAC system, I could just explain, I, I know these IT devices are attaching, let me apply a policy to those. If I know the WANs, WAN links of the, the certain type, then I apply that policy. And this is the benefit of a holistic fabric, because that's kind of where it ties together, right? It is, so you build an holistic security fabric, and then you let the different inf infrastructure orchestrators like VMware mm -hmm. or an SD-WAN vendor or a NAC vendor do their job really focused on the infrastructure. And so you guys help those guys out big time with the orchestration side of it. Well, we can connect into the orchestration systems and we just use it to make sure the security yeah. component yeah. is doing well. They're more focused on making sure the infrastructure delivers the applications to them. They the do their end. job, you do your job. Exactly. Take a minute to explain uh, for the folks out there Explain segmentation and what it is and why is it important for networks? A very simple example of segmentation. A couple of years ago, there was a, a bank that got hacked in one of the countries, I think it was uh, the Philippines or something like that. And what they found out was that in, their, in that particular country, they didn't have the same security infrastructure in place. So they got in through that particular branch and came all the way back into the core network. And so a very simple, segmentation policy they put in place was that I'm going to segment my countries. So I'm not going to let this country's network access the core data center if I, don't, if I give it a certain trust level. So segmentation can mean uh, physical countries, 
It can mean I'm going to segment my intellectual property off. Uh, I could be segmenting by functions. Don't let those salespeople anywhere near the intellectual property. Uh, you can also uh, segment by identity. So segmentation means many different things. You have to apply, I think, different levels of segmentation depending on your applications. And this is proven too. We've heard this in many countries in the queue. We had one guy from the U.S. government saying we have these critical infrastructure pieces in the United States. Why would we let anyone outside the United States yeah. access it? That's a great example. Well, I, I mean, if you go to critical infrastructure, you're even more dangerous. So, I mean, most yeah. of those, most of the infrastructure has been air-gapped. It's been totally air-gapped. You can't get at it. Uh, but that's changing as more of those devices become yeah. IP, and you have to let some access. And this is where IoT is a challenge that we're seeing. This is one of the problems. It's I IoT, and you know that category is often referred to these days as OT, operational technology. Talk about uh, endpoints. We're hearing endpoints being discussed. Like, hey, connect the endpoints. Your endpoint, endpoint strategy, network strategy, uh, kind of elusive for, uh, for some. Describe what, why endpoint uh, um, networking the endpoints is an important feature, or is it? I mean, how should when people think of it, the endpoint of the network, what, what's, what are they really talking about? Well, I think it's become more important. It's interesting, if you go back you know, 10 years or so, even 15 years, you have a lot of endpoint vendors who are Semantics, McAfee's, Trend Micros, even you know, Microsoft, I think, is now the largest endpoint security vendor. And then you have a different set of networking vendors, you know, ourselves and some other names out there, I can't remember. Um, but they're totally separated, and so, to, to look at your network, give it visibility, topology, and segment, you need to be able to see the endpoints on the network together. And so, uh, you know, the security fabric makes sure that you can at least see the endpoint. You may not provide the full stack of security, you may leave that to your endpoint vendor still, but your network should be able to see your endpoint and vice versa, and you should be able to see what's communicating between the two. I'd like to talk about SD-WAN, before we go there, just to kind of close out IoT, talk about Fortinet's uh, differentiation and advantage when you talk about convergence between IoT and access technology. Well, so the base technology is NAC, Network Access Control, which is in place there. Um, but our, our advantage really is now scale. We can see huge amounts of IoT devices which are attaching and then take action not only at the access level, but all the way into the cloud. SD-WAN has become a really hot topic. It's a huge market and it's in the yeah. billions in terms of spend. It connects you know, uh, in devices, I mean, campuses and devices. Um, but clouds had a big um, renaissance within the SD-WAN market. Talk about what's going on with SD-WAN and how the security fabric and the Fortinac fit into that because it's not your grandfather's SD-WAN market anymore as no. the expression goes. Well, it's, it's, in, it's in that class of everything's being software defined, fair enough. Um, but I think this marketplace, if you go even three years ago, was dominated because all the, you got two marketplaces. You've got what I call the retail, which is distributed enterprise, thousands and thousands of sites, which already went to a UTM infrastructure. And then you had the branch office, which was more connected. In fact, it just had a simple router in there. It was connected back to the uh, data center, which then go into the internet. And so what's happened is these branch offices, they need more and more access to the cloud, the more cloud applications are running. You need to provide QoS against those applications. And then also these large corporations have decided they don't want to pay, it's a lot of money to get certain high quality MPLS circuits when they can get faster circuits through DSL and other, other mechanisms. And so they wanted more flexibility around uh, the wide area network. So commodity network access, which is you know, non-MPLS yep. or high priced uh, secure, um, you get now more cloud access. This is translating more traffic or is it? Is that the driver? Well, that's what happens. And then you get more traffic going through there. It's the same with the next gen firewall right now. People are saying there's a refresh going, we don't know why. The reason for it is, and when you're in your office, you're more than likely communicating with the cloud versus your local yeah. databases. And so the same for the branch office. There's more traffic going through there. It's more encrypted. They want flexibility. They want HA modes. If that goes down now, you've got a big, you've got a big productivity problem with your employees there. And so this whole market sprung from nowhere only three or four years ago. Uh, and is already, in the as you say, in the billions yeah. of dollars. There's a lot of acquisitions that already happened, consolidation. In our mind, it's very important, but what's just as important as all those elements is security. So if I open up my branch office now to an internet connection, I need best of breed security on that device. And so we've been building SD-WAN, what I call core functionality for some time inside our fabric. Uh, it's quite a natural integration now of security into that. And in fact, in some recent tests we did with NSS Labs, uh, we got highly recommended for not only the SD-WAN features, uh, but that core security. Yeah. Today, SD-WAN vendors will say, well, I'll just go and get some security solution from somewhere and bolt it on or attach it on, provide it through the cloud, and that's fine. Um, but long-term, again, if you come back to that coordination, the orchestration, 
uh, across two different systems, it's going to become hard. And the other complicating factor in this, outside from the infrastructure component, is that a lot of SaaS uh, applications that people are buying, whether it's shadow IT or just off the shelf, whether it's Dropbox or you know, these services that are SaaS based, cloud based, <laughs> that's creating less of a perimeter. Yeah, well it, it all comes back, so the technology called CASB is providing that interface into those world, into that world through APIs. And it all comes back to making sure that all your mechanisms of protection, detection, control are available to all your systems. So if I need to, if I've got some SD-WAN device somewhere and I need to check where this is going, I can use my application database. Or if I need to check I'm going to this cloud as that, I use my CASB API. And so it comes back to a, a platform approach, a fabric approach. John, what's the uh, SD-WAN approach for Fortinet? How do you guys do it? Why should people care? What's the differentiation? Why Fortinet for SD-WAN? What's the approach? Uh, integrated, in one word. And that is, uh, you don't need two boxes, you don't need two VMs, you don't need a box plus a cloud. It's all integrated on the system. Best of breed SD-WAN functionality, best of breed tested by third party security, which allows you then to have a much more cost effective solution. I think our TCO in the test was a, a tenth, a hundredth of some of the leading vendors outside there, because you bring in two vendors together and it gets very costly. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put my uh, you know, cynical hat on. So you're saying integrate security with SD-WAN. I'm going to say, hey, why not just keep it separate? Why integrate? Uh, because the two functions need to work together. So where's the file we're going to go? Is it going to go in the cloud or is it going to go here? Who decides on the policy? If something happens, segmentation, who's deciding on segmentation policy? Uh, these usually are two different companies. They don't really talk apart from maybe a, there's an API leaking the security capabilities, but to our mind, again, it comes back to that end-to-end -end segmentation. And that's what a lot of the, I would say, the larger infrastructure vendors are trying to do. I want infrastructure all the way to devices being added through my campus, through my SD-WAN, data center and cloud. And if you've got multiple vendors again all over the place, there's no way you're going to be able to coordinate that. All right, so I'll, I'll put my IT um, practitioner hat on. Okay, so I get that, so probably less security uh, manual risks for human error, but I really want to automate. My goal is to automate some of these IT functions, get better security end-to-end. -end. Does this fit that, um, that, that requirement? Yeah, and so from an automation perspective, we're building in some tools of our, of our own, but what we're finding more and more is that from an IT, as you said, they've gone out and built some DevOps capability. Ansible's a, you know, a good example there. And so what we're doing is making sure that, in fact, a lot of our, our partners and our, our SCs have already built these scripts and put them on GitHub, well now Microsoft Pub or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so we're taking those in and we're QAing them, making sure they're a high quality and then making, making them available to our, our customers and our partners through there. So that this DevOps world, especially with cloud moving so fast, has become very important. And to us, it's a very important area we're going to make available to our, to our partners and customers. One of the things that's talked about a lot is SSL inspection. Is that important? What do you guys do there? I think it's extremely important in that um, a lot of enterprises have switched it off. And the reason they switched it off is because when you switch it on, it almost kills your performance. There was a recent, again, NS Labs test that was doing next-gen firewall testing for SSL, and uh, some vendors' performance decreased by 90%. And basically it was, a, it was useless, you just to turn it off. And so um, a lot of enterprises want to switch it on. To switch it on, you need a system that uh, has the performance capabilities. Well, I think we decreased around 15%, which is, I mean, just the law of physics say you've got to decrease in some way, um, but 15% is a lot better than 90%. And you've got to switch that on because otherwise it's just a giant hole in your, in your firewall. John, talk about the cloud, because cloud now has multiple tracks to it. It used to be straight public cloud. Obviously, on-premises is hot hybrid cloud, multi-cloud is the center of the conference. It's been validated. We see um, Amazon Web Services announcing something with VMware validation that you're going to start to see an on-premises and cloud, and some cloud native, born in the cloud companies will be out there. How do you guys extend the security fabric for those two cloud use cases? Um, how does the Fortinet products scale to the cloud? Yeah, two good points. So again, a few years ago, I'd ask customers about cloud and say, yeah, we're going to, take some steps into AWS. Now it's, I've got four clouds, what's the next cloud I'm going to put inside there? I've got global clouds around the world. It's kind of interesting that there was this, there's, there's this mad rush and it's still going on into public cloud, but then I still see some people trying to do hybrid cloud and put some stuff inside their data centers. Some customers don't want that data leaving regardless. Some people can't move main, mainframe applications out there. So there's always going to be a hybrid world for some time. Uh, but the key is multi-cloud security in that um, more unlikely your AWS 
security systems are not going to work inside your Google Cloud, uh, not going to work inside your Azure Cloud, not going to work inside some of the data center pieces. And so hybrid cloud and multi-cloud security are really important. And so for us, the ability to support all those clouds, and it's not just saying, well, I can put my VM inside, my firewall VM inside AWS. There's a whole set of deep integrations you need to do to make sure you're inside their automation systems, you can see visibility, there's a lot of uh, practices around uh, compliance, et cetera. So it's actually a big task for each of us to make sure that we're compliant across the set of functions for each of those clouds. My final question is going to be around customer impact. Um, if we zoom out, look at the marketplace, and uh, I'm a CIO or CXO, I'm a big time, busy enterprise architect or CIO. I'm so busy, I've got all this stuff yeah. going on. You know, why Fortinet? Explain to me, you know, why are you important in my world? What should I be thinking about? What are some of the opportunities and challenges that I might face? What should I look at? I want to go to the cloud mm. as much as possible because there's some benefits there. I want on-premises to be as seamless as possible to the public cloud. I want rock solid security. I want to have the ability to use uh, uh, SaaS apps, right. have programmable networks, and have a great development team building top line revenue for my business. How can you help Is me? that all? <laughs> um, I think CIOs and CISOs are happier dealing with less vendors. The trouble is with some very large vendors, they just slow down on the development side. So I think what we bring to the table, and by the way, we're now the third largest cybersecurity company out there. What we try and bring is a broad approach, a broad product set, so you can have different things from us, as well as integrate into your current set. Um, but we, t we try to keep very agile and fast with our developments because uh, otherwise you'll fall behind the infrastructure, you'll fall behind the cyber threats, you know, GDPR for example, in the last year, you've got to be keep up with that. And so what we bring to the table is now a, a reasonably large company with five and a half thousand employees, a very large R&D budget. We try and move very fast, a large product set all integrated through our fabric. Uh, but again, we try and stay as agile and as fast moving as possible well, we can't do it organically. We try and do it organically, so our systems integrate very well. But we can't do it, then we'll go and make smaller acquisitions. Bradford, uh, Bradford Networks was an example of that for, IO, uh, for IoT. Um, but I think we're building now a much better relationship with the CIO and CISO level and becoming one of their strategic partners going forward. Talk about the community that you guys have built, because I've noticed that, and I've seen you guys certainly over the past couple of years at RSA, I think a year and a half, two years ago, you're working with a lot of industry partners. It's not just Fortinet by themselves. You work with, within the industry itself. Yeah, Talk because the people have built their, uh, their ecosystems and they've made some decisions and they want you to integrate inside there. So we have about 50 partners now where they use our API to provide integration. So they build to our API. And although we've mentioned 40 NAC today, uh, we have APIs, for example, for Forescout and other NAC vendors. So if they ch they've chosen that specific vendor, then we're fine. We'll integrate that inside of Fabric. Will it have the level of integration that we have? Probably not, but at least you can see, you know, have visibility, for example. Um, but I think the, the, the technology we've been building in the last uh, year or so is something called Fabric Connectors which is a much, much deeper integration into the platforms. So we have connectors for VMware NSX, for Cisco ACI, for AWS, and this provides a two-way communication, and that two-way communication is important for one word, and that's automation. So once you can see things, once you can uh, direct policy backwards, then you can start stitching together these objects and provide that end-to-end -end automation. Final question for you, a lot of the leading enterprises and, and, and businesses out there that are using technology to build digital business, whether it's from developers all the way down under the hood into the network, are all betting on multi-cloud. Clearly that's, that's obvious to us and that's pretty much being picked up by mainstream now. So early adopters that are leading the, the charge are multi-cloud. If I'm betting on multi-cloud, why Fortinet? Why should I be working with you guys? Because we're committed to supporting all those clouds. And as I said, it's no easy task to support, well I think we support six clouds now, to go through all the different items and integrations across that. We're committed to that. We've got probably the most expansive integration across the most security products inside the industry, um, and we continue to, to do that going forward. John, thanks for spending the time. John Madison, Senior Vice President Products and Solutions at Fortinet here inside the special CUBE conversation with the big news today, the Fortinet, new product integrating with the security fabric, IOT, SD-WAN, cloud solutions for multi-cloud and, and IT. As automation comes down the road really fast, we're here in theCUBE bringing it to you. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.